Dr. Jaffe, as a follow-up to our COVID and histamine discussion, I have a question for you. Would such people need to go on a low histamine diet? And there are so many resources, it gets quite confusing. And do they require a histamine one or a histamine two blocker? Well, let's take the second part of the question first. Is there benefit in taking a prescription that blocks histamine? You would think so. But it turns out that they all have paradoxic reactions. They all induce the need for taking them. In other words, they create a cycle, which in the absence of the prescription, you get more symptoms. So now you take a higher dose of the prescription. There are H1 blockers. There are H2 blockers. They've been around for a long time. We know a lot about them. If you're going to do nothing else, they might help. But if you're going to follow our physiology before pharmacology approach, you will restore digestion. You will restore digestion. You will naturally become low histamine, but you won't have to go through the cycle of despair, that's what I call it, of using either H1 or H2 blockers. So I'm glad you asked the question. You might think that they would be the answer, but they are the problem, not the answer. <clears throat> as long as you follow a physiology before pharmacology approach, as long as you look at the biochemistry of the individual and respond to that using four self-assessments and eight predictive biomarkers interpreted to their best outcome goal value. Now, there's also a question, <clears throat> excuse me, there's also a question about what foods should this type of person have? I will generally say that you should not take aged cheese. In fact, I don't think you should take anything from a cow and most of the aged cheeses come from a cow. So I avoid that problem by telling people avoid cow dairy. You can have some sheep or goat yogurt or cheese if you want. But the most important thing is to follow the LRA plan because the LRA test determines what foods sensitize your immune defense and repair system. So if you look diligently online, you will find conflicting information about which foods to eat and which foods to avoid. <laughs> and from my point of view, the most important thing is to individualize or personalize the case. And that means four self-assessments, eight predictive biomarkers, including the LRA test and following the LRA plan. You will quickly find that foods that are reactive act as if they're histaminic. Foods that are reactive behave as if they're inducing histamine because they are. So I recommend that people follow this guidance, this physiology before pharmacology advice, this nature's pharmacy, nature's alkaline way, and not get confused. Not get confused by 19th or 20th century information when we actually know more today in the 21st century about the causes, not just the consequences, not just the symptoms, but the underlying mechanism. And that's where we stand out where we have a very consistent pattern of helping, not harming, by following the LRA test, whatever it produces. So you can try to follow a low histamine diet, but then you find that there are many, many conflicts with which low histamine diet you mean. I will point out that tyramine, tyramine, which comes from tyrosine, tyramine, is abundant in aged cheese. It's one of the things that you like about aged cheese. But um, that clearly, in the presence of high histamine people, histidilic people, makes things worse. Supposedly red wine, but I don't think necessarily red wine. 
I think sulfites in cheap wine are definitely a problem. But if you get Cru or Grand Cru, good Saint Emilion, uh, a good Bordeaux, a good Burgundian, whatever is your preference, make it a good wine and drink less of it. Because the high quality wines, if they cause histaminic problems, would, would not have any sales. So the high quality French wines have a certain amount of sulfite added in the beginning to the grapes to make sure that mold doesn't form on the grapes. But by the time they get done with the fermentation process, there's no sulfite left to measure. So I recommend drinking well, eating better, and learning nature's alkaline way, nature's pharmacy, we can guide you through the weeds. We can guide you through the details. We can guide you through to personal success.